Uh, okay, so welcome everyone. It's uh, it's 10:15 in San Jose, California. It's a little bit cold, you know. I know it's not like London, but uh, uh, tell you the truth, we're not used to this kind of weather. Uh, uh, you know, and and I cannot complain because I lived most of my life in Pennsylvania, a small a small uh, town called Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It's it's close to uh, New York City. Uh, but uh, uh, just go back to the uh, presentation here. here. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and also about the uh, interesting research we are doing here about uh, IoT and uh, blockchain and also the in inclusion of uh, artificial, artificial intelligence, AI. Uh, I hope everybody can see the presentation here. Uh, Alex, you can confirm that everybody can see it. Yeah. Just make sure I'm... Okay, perfect. Uh, so. Uh, I spent about nine years uh, working at UC Berkeley, and then I moved uh, from Berkeley to San Jose. I, I worked at some of the universities around the United States, from University of Massachusetts, and also the uh, uh, some of the research I have done is actually uh, you know shared by MIT and four magazines. Uh, lately, and and this is this is just to show you how the interest is really building for the concept of IoT and blockchain and, and artificial intelligence is an old concept that keep evolving. Uh, it goes through some kind of a peak points and then it's died and then pick up. But I hope this time it's going to be the real one. It's not just a hype. I, I lived through the 80s and the 90s when um, AI was really the big thing. Uh, uh, so the, the three topics we're going to cover today um, are uh, the uh, IoT, blockchain and AI, how can you mix them? and How can I get them together so they can give you some kind of a unique model? Uh, one of the paper that I have uh, uh, published with MIT is, uh, uh, it's a secure model, uh, you know, using uh, blockchain for the IoT. And, and you are welcome to uh, search that. It's really giving you some like an overview about how can you use uh, a technology like blockchain to uh, secure something that we are really dealing with every day here. Uh, the the media itself, when I talk to them, uh, their main concern is about uh, uh, something which is I call the SSP. SSP is uh, uh, security, safety, and privacy. Uh, this is their main concern. And I remember talking to uh, some of the uh, reporters, uh, you know, from uh, ABC, NBC, Fox, you know, uh, all CBS, all of them. This is their main concern for the consumer, to give the credit. To, to, uh, to you guys in Europe compared to the United States. Uh, the blockchain technology, the blockchain research, the blockchain you know, awareness is, is actually more intense in Europe than the United States. The United States, uh, certain uh, flagship universities is actually um, hunting that and going after the blockchain and, and, and trying to, uh, to uh, figure out how can they can use it in their, you know, in their research uh, uh, Purdue University, University of Southern California, MIT, Stanford, you know, they have, they have, they have the classes about, about the blockchain, but it's under a special topic. And, and if you've ever been in academia, you know that if you're confused about any topic, just throw it under a special topic and student will take it from there. Uh, and hopefully that will change. There are many reasons for this, and I'm going to discuss that one later, why the United States is really uh, pulling their, you know, their leg to, uh, to go into the blockchain. There's many regulations, uh, mis misconception about the blockchain. The blockchain is being tainted by the concept of the, of the cryptocurrency and, and a lot of people look at it as a bubble and, 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 and they're not really 100% sure about it. Uh, Microsoft recently, they have this new term crypto tech, which is one of those technology, one of those terms that will include everything they talk about it today in the blockchain. Now let's look at this uh, slide. And this slide is one of my favorite, why? Because it's, it's really, really gonna uh, make you start thinking about, uh, well, that's true. You know, uh, the electric light did not come from the continuous improvement of candles, which, was his, which is the technical definition of disruptive technology. Whenever you heard the name disruptive technology, think about this statement. And it is, uh, it's honestly, it's, it's true. Because if we take any example, and, and I worked with few people in the Valley, in Silicon Valley here, uh, you know, in disruptive technology. Last year, I was working with Google on one of their apps uh, with, uh, with a group of students from San Jose State and other university. And it's, it, it is uh, 
the whole the whole mindset about disruptive technology is you have to find another way you have to look at another way for you to do it instead of just improving whatever you have and that will help when we when we talk about blockchain when we talk about you know artificial artificial intelligence when we talk about uh, you know the iot concept as a big concept here this morning stanford uh, university there are actually there's a group at stanford university uh, they are what they announced that they're working on some kind of a laser that they can put it at the top of uh, autonomous cars where it can see around the curve they use some kind of technology which is you can find it you know in uh, in their research paper, instead of uh, using this big piece of radar at the top of the autonomous car that will rotate and try to get all the information from everybody around the uh, around you, they will they try to get more information by looking around the curves and and getting as much information uh, as they can from that little light that coming from the object uh, around that uh, around that corner. So that's that's another example here. Um, I'm bringing this slide for a very important reason because what we're going to talk about it tonight is actually uh, covering or covers three of the five top trends for the digital transformation in 2018. Uh, we uh, will talk about AI, we'll talk about blockchain, we'll talk about IoT. But if you think about it for a second, you will understand that even when we talk about big data, you know, talking about uh, 5G, which is a big thing for you, especially, uh, you know, in the United Kingdom, you know. Two weeks ago, I have a, a webinar about 5G with uh, three or four of the executives from, uh, you know, from the British Telecom. They uh, they're deploying, you know, uh, the 5G, and 5G is is is, is extremely important for uh, IoT, for you know, for artificial intelligence, for many of the applications or many of the technologies you are dealing with. I'll give you one example. Tesla is about 15 minutes from where I'm sitting here. And uh, they've been complaining about, you know, one of the, uh, one, of, one of their biggest problem, or they're, they're complaining about this problem for a long time, which is how can, how can they upload and download the information so fast on, uh, in an autonomous car uh, when the decision is a split second, which is death, or life or death for them. You know, if you're driving Tesla and it's an autopilot and this information go back and forth, we need some kind of a channel we need some kind of a pipe that will upload and download the information very quickly. You don't want to. You don't want to look at that circle while you're driving. It's downloading or it's updating, update. Nobody want to see that. That's not going to work, especially if you're going, uh, you know, something like 80 miles or 90 miles an hour. Uh, so that's uh, and and 5G is another. Uh, that's another uh, uh, advantage of it. IoT will benefit from that one big time. Uh, if you did if you did any research about 5G, you're going to find that. Uh, the 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 power consumption will be less. Uh, the the bandwidth for sending and receiving information will be higher. So it's going to solve so many of those problems we are dealing with now when we are using the traditional pipes for or traditional communications for for sending and receiving information from the uh, from the edge or from what Cisco called them the fog computing, which is those sensors at the end. Uh, those sensors will send the information, process it, and send it to either uh, certain centers close to them or to the cloud to process them. Uh, this is another issue we'll talk about. So just, just to bring this to your attention, we're going to be talking about three out of the top five. And the other two is included in the package here. So blockchain plus AI plus IoT, that's, that's basically like a uh, and a, a, a chemical formula, you use it, or equation, you use it to, to get that magical mix. So you can have communication, you can have intelligence, and you can have security. Those are the three things you keep in mind when you're talking to, to the, you know, talking about uh, uh, IoT. Uh, one, I think last month, February, yes, last month, I, I had a meeting with, with, the, with the CEO of uh, this small company in the Silicon Valley, and 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 he was right about being concerned about about what he should do uh, next to to catch the wave of the blockchain or the IoT. Uh, and and I have a long talk with him because he's uh, you know he's a, he has a small company. He's a good friend of mine. Has a small company and he's worried that they're going to be left behind. And so so I he invited me to talk about it in, you know, to his employees and engineers there. So I covered the same topic here. Uh, 
uh, to show people that this is this is where the things are going here. So let's talk first about the first half of this presentation, which is how can I secure IoT? Now, the, the definition of IoT depends on who you're talking to, depends on the vendor you're talking to. Are you talking to, uh, you know, the startup that's dealing with sensors, startup that's dealing with analytics, startup that's dealing with the, the connectivity, or are you dealing with the big names uh, like the Cisco's, the IBM, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, all these big companies, it depends on who you're talking to. They look at the IoT from their perspective. It's so big that the definition of the IoT sometimes is confusing to people. What is it? I mean, it's everything around me. I mean, the provost of the university where I graduated, he came to visit me one time and, uh, you know, at, in, in, my, in this office. And uh, he, he, uh, he looked at me and he said, OK, can you, can you explain to me what the heck is this IoT? I heard about it all the time. You know, the simplest definition for this one is everything around you is alive. Everything has, you know, senses. Everything is acting and reacting, and uh, and and it is it is a it is an exciting concept, you know. And 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 my you know my prediction for 2018, we're gonna we we're gonna move away from the hype and from the excitement that we we will see, we we have seen in the past two or three years with IoT to some kind of a real application. It's it's a fascinating year. It's gonna be for the for the IoT from both sides. From the side of the consumers and from the side of the of the companies, the term IoT will become like a, you know a house uh, you know hold you know brand that people use it all the time. Amazon is 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 really uh, uh, doing good in that. I mean, if uh, uh, and 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 this is one of the things that I remember uh, an interview with ABC. We uh, they're they're asking about the consumer electronic show in in uh, uh, Las Vegas. If 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 you really uh, step away from the whole you know excitement around that show it's a big show for the electronic consumer electronics scene in the united states and try to think about what is the main or what was the main theme of that you're going to see that a lot of companies and i'm going to mention companies that are really good in this research you're going to talk about companies like amazon companies like google companies like apple microsoft and if you think about the four companies i just mentioned now each and every one of them has some some kind or some some sort of digital assistant. And we're talking about Siri, we're talking about Cortana, we're talking about uh, Google, you know, assistant. We're talking about all these companies, and we also we're talking about IBM as as the big you know uh, an elephant in the room here. It's, they have Watson uh, on a large scale. And the the question was, explain that to us. Okay, my perception about why the companies are spending that much money. On, on having uh, Echo or having you know Alexa uh, in every single house and every single you know home uh, every single car uh, have it on your smartphone all of these things is to make it as the hub for the IoT. The, this is th that's why they are racing. That's why they are fighting for their shares in the market so you can be one of their customers. Uh, Amazon they have the, the they have the Echo they have Alexa. You know, Google have the same thing with screen without screen. They they showed us they they show us a, a demo of that. This is their chance. So everything else you're gonna buy later will be connected to that hub. Now I know about Ford. You know, you know the the uh, the famous auto company there. They give you the option when you are when when you buy the car, would you like to have it with, you know, with Alexa? And the same thing with with Apple. Apple is is Apple is hiring like crazy when it comes to this kind of, you know, kind of technology. Same thing with the companies when we talk about Google. Uh, you know, they're trying to catch up with that. Uh, you know, uh, Amazon is the leader for this. They have a big share and they, they have it almost, you know, you know, uh, you know, available for people at different prices, different shapes. Uh, this is the, this is their goal. I would like to have the hub and this hub will, if you, everything else you're going to buy from me or everything else I have an agreement with, they can use uh, Alexa will be automatically, you know, plug and play. If if you want to use that term, uh, the one of the difficulties for the applications of IoT is I have to define it, I have to connect it, I have to make sure it's talked to the different parts of the network. Now they're trying to simplify that. Now one one of the interesting uh, uh, application that I heard about it is, uh, for example, a fork that will tell you you're eating too fast, 
or uh, when you when when you insert that fork in the food, they're gonna analyze the food and tell you it's not good for you. Stop. Or this thing is is really too much fat, or this one is not cooked well. Uh, uh, there will be an IP address for every single part of your body where the doctor can access that, and you know, and and uh, you know, you the doctor will send you medication or will contact you telling you that okay, well, I found something with your your heart, with your arm. Uh, and, and that will make it much easier for 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 the communication for for you know for keeping everybody healthy. Uh, I'm not talking about privacy. I'm not talking about security. I'm not talking about you know safety here. I'm, I'm just giving you know a vision about what what is coming. ATM machine that is all have we have them everywhere. Those those cash machines everywhere. Why don't you use them to sense everything around it? If there's a crime, if there is an activity there, where they can just report this one to the police instead of just reporting the you know, the activities when somebody's using them. So this is just simple examples uh, for the IoT, uh, uh, you know, applications. Uh, and, and and I can give more examples. We'll hopefully we have more time to talk about this, you know, uh, uh, after that. But for in order for us to understand the, uh, to understand the IoT uh, and and uh, securing the IoT, I have, I, have, I have to understand the components of the IoT, and there are many models. I'm, I'm, I'm not claiming that this is the only model for that. I'm trying to use this one to simplify the, the concept itself. IoT architect itself has four models, and, and you can think about it for a second. Uh, things, which is what you have in your hand, uh, whatever you know, ends or or, or, or endpoints you are using, uh, the uh, the gateways and the cloud infrastructure and the network infrastructure. All of them revolving around you know the IoT architect itself and I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of them to make sure that everybody understand what does it mean when I say things uh, I mean uh, things is for example you know and this is this is an example I gave it to uh, you know uh, to my students uh, last year about understanding the things we we're talking about uh, during that consumer uh, show in, in Las Vegas uh, there was uh, actually they showed um, a smart mirror uh, that will we look at the mirror, the mirror will analyze your look, your face, and say, you look sick today, you look horrible today, you know, I cancel your meeting, and then what happened after that is, uh, you know, uh, I already called an Uber for you to take you to, uh, you know, to the doctor, I set up the appointment, I move your, meet, your meeting to tomorrow, and then after that one, the doctor will see you, uh, and uh, will send the, uh, will send the, the They'll send the prescription to the pharmacy. The pharmacy will deliver that medication to you uh, by drone. So a drone, will, a drone will be there through your window or the door and will scan your eyes or some kind of ID will give you that medication. Now that's not the end of the story. The end of, the, now the medication itself, and we have a company in Redwood City, which is about you know 45 minutes from here. Uh, there are something called smart pills. The smart pills in, themselves is once you take them and they dissolve in your stomach or they're used by the body, will send a signal to the doctor saying he used or she used the medication. So that that will that will solve so many of the problems of people ignoring their medication or overusing their medication. So that's that's the part of the things. Now uh, you talk about the uh, network infrastructure. The network infrastructure routers. You're talking about all the different hardware, you know, coming from Cisco or Juniper, or all these big names. You know, talking about, you know, uh, you're talking about switches. You're talking about the small, you know, devices you have that will connect the things to the network. And the gateways. The gateway itself is how can you I translate the data, you know, from uh, zeros and ones to something that people can understand on 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 the diagram. And then you have, of course, the cloud infrastructure, which is keeping everything together. Uh, and I'll spend more time talking about how the cloud infrastructure is is is, is really a curse and a blessing a, a blessing at the same time. Uh, the, the centralized model we have when we talk about the IoT. So let's look at uh, challenges that uh, facing secure IoT deployments. Um, and uh, and and the challenge is 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 uh, is really stemming out of a very simple concept. Many of the IoT systems are poorly designed. I mean, think about how how we got to the concept, or how we arrived to the concept of IoT. We find ourselves one day that we have all these systems around us, multiple systems talking to each other or not talking to each other, and now we think about connecting the systems of the systems, and then then say, okay, how how good it is 
if we don't connect them all and make them talk to each other and make sure that this this kind of communication is secure this kind of communication is really has some kind of intelligence so poorly designed implemented using diverse protocol and and uh, and, and one of the things uh, that uh, you know, uh, we can find uh, for here at the at the university level, and I'm not talking about San Jose State. I'm talking about in general, is the standardization. And I'm gonna give like two or three minutes talking about the standardization. Standardization is a big problem, and uh, this this concept of having one standard or or a set of standards, you can find it in every device belongs to the IoT, is is a big challenge. Uh, this is, and, and let me explain you to the size of that. It's, if you remember, we talk about all these small devices, the, the digital assistants, Alexa, Siri, that's a problem because Alexa cannot talk to Siri, Siri cannot talk to Cortana, Donna cannot talk to Watson and, and so on, or Google Assist because they have different protocols. So who will convince the big four, one or one of them or two of them to share this, this kind of information so the customer can have cross over and go from one you know, assistant to the other? You're asking them. Technically, you're asking them to give up their share in the market. When it comes to money, everything stops. Everything stops. Here's the bad. This is the this is the case. They say no. Now they can they, they can cut the market into shares, and everybody will have their percentage, and somebody will be more than that. That that would be another solution for it. So so we'll cover that one in more detail there. And the life cycle. I mean, uh, the the term itself, Internet of uh, Things, is is is. Uh, First, it was coined by uh, Cisco, and they used to call this one Internet of Everything. <laughs> and then the whole thing morphed into the case of Internet of Things. So it's still fairly you know, young when it's talking about a life cycle. We have to go through a whole life cycle from introduction to growth to maturity to decline. So we're still learning. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, the maintenance and the management of the devices, of the IoT devices, is not, is not fully understood. Uh, privacy concerns complex. It's not always uh, really evident. In Europe, you have the GDP, GDPR, which is the new concept that Google, uh, or the new regulation that's coming in May, that Google and Microsoft, the big names, are struggling with that. We don't have it here in the United States. They're a little bit relaxed on that on that role. In Europe, they are very, you know, uh, picky when it comes to the privacy of their uh, of the customers. Lack of standards and authentication and authorization of the IoT edge devices. Again, back again to the concept of standardization. The uh, SAP is is uh, is big in in the United States. It's a German company, you know that, and they have they have an arm here or uh, you know a company here called uh, SAP NS2, and that one is an American company, so they can do business with the United States with the federal government. As a German company, they cannot do business with the federal government here in the United States, so they have to create a company, and this company belongs to SAP. So I know the CEO of that company. I talked to him for almost two hours about this concept, about the standardization, you know, and the authentication, and what are the obstacles facing that. Uh, it's uh, and either it's the government will will impose some kind of of, uh, of regulations forcing, and I'm talking about the United States forcing them to get together and, and and that's the big names in tech so they can agree on certain protocols hopefully one day we'll have something called iot certified which means this device can work with whatever you know you know system you are using or uh, we can have something like tcp ip protocols we use it in the network which is free everybody can use that there's no uh, i mean it's it's a it's a platform free it's it's a cross platform there is no uh, conditions on using it which operating system will use that uh, set of uh, protocols or the companies will see there's a there actually a benefit instead of dealing with one billion consumers we can deal with two uh, that will be another thing so so that was the thing about uh, the the standardization we don't have that and the security standards for platform configuration virtualization all these are actually still at the beginning we'll talk about the iot uh, and it is it is actually uh, enchanted water for us uh, uh, I mean, the uh, we're building that. We're building the knowledge about it. We have companies, so many companies, uh, they're starting and they're talking about the IoT. They're taking one part of the IoT, uh, IoT and they they spend their time and they spend, whether it's at the beginning or the end or in the middle. And that's that's where you see that everybody is exploring their niche in the market. 
the the complication also which is a little, little bit technical here about the things that uh, there is a conflict between uh, you know speed and and uh, you know an intelligence you're talking about the things that use simple processing and operating system they cannot support you know high security approach there and this is this is where you find that the uh, blockchain presents uh, itself as a solution for for a situation like this well, I have a sensor. I don't want to spend too much because the sensor itself is a simple, you know, binary decision on and off, hot and cold or cold, something like that. So why I have to spend too much energy there, too much intelligence there and spend money there? Because now it's going to come come to the point where you have to be very careful about how many sensors you have. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of sensors. Uh, companies or com industries like the oil and gas industry, they are very big in IoT. Uh, you know, they, they they spend tons of money on that one. The same thing with the health care. They are very big when it comes to to the use of IoT because that's that's that will save tons of money for them. But we have to think about okay, at the at the edge at the devices, what kind of processing power, what you know, what kind of intelligence I can use there, I can use there. I mean, is it worth it to to uh, to have all these security protocol on something which is zero and one? Well, the answer is yes. At the same time, it's known for the cost. And I'll, I'll give you an example of this. In 2016, I lived this one, you know, this this incident, I lived that one, uh, you know, myself. I was given a, presenta a presentation about IoT security in a convention in the Santa Clara Convention Center. And uh, during that time, if you, know, you have all this group from the Homeland Security, from Microsoft, and is listening to the to the lecture, and then and one of them start, you know, he he was trying trying to tweet about what's going on and Twitter is not working. So he asked him, him you know, his friend, okay, I mean, my account is down. What's what's going on? Is the Wi-Fi is down here? What's going on? They found out that the, uh, the uh, there was an attack and that attack was uh, on, on, on October 21st in 2016. And that was, uh, I think, Friday. And that attack was part of the distributed denial of service, huge one. Um, and it's the it, the person who used that or started that attack. He didn't spend that much time, and uh, you can go to GitHub, and you can find the code for this. And I'm not encouraging you to use it. Don't use it because now it's really uh, it's, it's not a good thing. Uh, the uh, he used a used a program called uh, or malware called uh, Mariah. Mariah is is a Japanese word for the future. So he, what he have done, he wrote a 600 lines with a C programmer language to use the devices, the devices of the, uh, uh, of the IoT that's still at the default password and uh, initiated millions of requests to certain websites, Twitter, PayPal, New York Times, uh, you know, Netflix, and that's, and, and you know about that, you know, the denial of service, it's like you have a store in the mall and then you have about 200 people suddenly came and, and trying to get in into that was they're not buying anything. They're just trying to jam the entrance and make everybody be there for nothing. That's the same thing happening with the with the uh, with this kind of attack. Millions, millions of, of requests sent that broke down all the uh, websites. And it was funny because we're talking about the security and here we go. We, we are actually under attack by a very simple software and that software uh, was written and posted and this person or persons who do this one they were bragging about it so go to github this is our account you can find that soft that software in one of my articles uh, on linkedin i have a link to that uh, to that software uh, i don't know if the if it's still there with or the the, the government uh, brought this one down no the blockchain approach the blockchain approach let me talk a little bit about some of the news about this one, and then we're gonna to go to the technical part of it. NASA is is now thinking about using blockchain for the communication of the different satellites to secure that kind of communication. And and you will come to Google that, and, and you'll find uh, you know few articles talking about how NASA is considering the blockchain uh, as one of their options for securing the communications between the international stage. The, uh, space station and the different part of the satellites that uh, they use when they're launching one of their uh, you know one of their uh, spaceships uh starbucks starbucks is considering using blockchain but you know there is a twist there 
And the reason for this is they want to use their own currency. And your, their own currency is based on the blockchain technology. So the CEO of, of uh, uh, Starbucks, he was talking about why not? I mean, this is going to make sure that we we are really helping our customers to make it easy for them, secure for them to use their payment without worrying about uh, about this. But here's the problem. Um, when you talk about blockchain, everybody will ask you, and every single day, every single day, I receive at least, what, 10, 20 emails or, uh, from on, on LinkedIn asking about the cryptocurrency. I mean, for me, I'm out of that. You know, I, I have nothing to do with it. I, you know, for me, I, I don't deal with that. One. First of all, I don't have money to deal with it. Number two, if I have money, I'm not going to deal with that. I lived through the 2000 uh, dot, you know, in calm, uh, dot gone, dot bomb. That's what happened when, when the whole bubble of the of the technology, uh, you know, exploded there. And you have all the, you just add dot com to your name and your stock will go through the roof. Uh, same thing happening with blockchain. Just add the blockchain, add the crypto name to your name, and then everybody will buy your stock. So if you want to understand it, nobody's coming to you. The exception of, of you guys. You guys are wonderful people. And if somebody want to buy and sell, that's a different story. And everybody, they're, they're online. I have one of my students, she got so upset at me. And she sent me an angry email. She said, you told me, don't do it. You told me, you know, this is dangerous. Don't, I still stand by my word. And I'm telling you that be careful, be careful. We don't know the end of that. There's some good player there which, which you can trust him, but still there's no regulations, there is no punishment. Uh, you read more about the, the problems with the cryptocurrency more than the benefits of that. Few people will benefit from this and, and, and many people will be victims of, uh, of this unregulated and unknown concept here. Uh, to dive into the blockchain, you know, um, I'd love to go through, you know, a little bit introduction about uh, how the companies and how the, the uh, industry, how the how the academia really approaching uh, the blockchain. Blockchain. When you talk about blockchain technology, there are three tracks, and it's going to make sense to you once you see, you know, you want to see see the diagram. Three tracks, and those tracks are, first of all, it's a pure research and development track, which is what's going on with the university. They look at it, they try to understand it, you know, they try to find the underlying technology, they look at that one, and uh, yes, I have, I have one, let me go back here. The second one is a business benefit, something immediate. This is the track. The, th the third one is a long-term tr transformational potential track. So, so keep this in mind. So if you keep this in mind, you'll understand the different directions of blockchain. Uh, what do you do in the lab, where it fits, it, it is part of it's going to be the R and D to see what is good, you know, how can we improve it? How can we have our own, you know, uh, version of the blockchain? The same thing goes with the, uh, you know, uh, with the immediate benefits. And I'm going to explain each one of them in, in uh, you know, a very short uh, fashion here. So this track is focused on understanding what it means, developing the blockchain-based system, working on real use cases, but ultimately is what? Investigation, learning. You know, uh, there is no delivery of a working system. Uh, research papers, blockchain are going to have tons of them. They, they have they have all these studies. They have all the analysis. They're just waiting for somebody to take them from that level of being a pure R&D to the next level, which is how can I apply that? So that will be the first track that we talk about it when we talk about the uh, blockchain. The second one is this is internal for the companies. So this is the immediate benefits. And I talked, and I give an example with Starbucks, for example. There are so many companies, other companies doing the same thing. Uh, this track covers two bases. One, learning how to work with this new technology, delivering an actual system. So they take it the next step. And this is internal. I mean, Google is famous for this. So they have so many people working on this, uh, on this technology. Amazon, the same thing. You know, so many of the, and Amazon, I th Amazon they have, uh, they, uh, they're using a certain blockchain system that help the customers and and yesterday I was listening to the news yesterday. Amazon is trying to have their own bank, and they're not talking about cash. They're talking about their own currency. So I'm a Prime, you know, you know, Amazon member. So you know what's going to happen. I don't have to go through that cash. I don't have to go or anything. I can use their own currency. I can buy it and I can use it to buy their products. So they are, uh, you know, short circuiting the whole banking because they want to cut off the 
fees given to the credit card or to the bank to process the payment for the customers. So this is when we talk about an immediate benefits, business benefits. You learn and then you apply it right away. Here's the third one. The third one is the track of some people who are really looking at the future, they have a vision about it. They recognize that the true value of the blockchain based network, uh, you know, looking at the big process, how can we disrupt the whole technology using the blockchain? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of industries are looking at the blockchain as the next thing for them the next disruptive technology, the banking technologies, um, the banking industry, the healthcare industry, the, the, the uh, supply chain industry, and, and, and the gaming industry, entertainment. You need, you know, you need this, you need this technology when, uh, and, and I have, and I, and I encourage you uh, guys and ladies to, you know, to check this one, because this is, if you're in the legal and the in, you know, environment, you're going to love this one. There is a model used to identify uh, the locations or the applications or 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 the cases for uh, blockchain something called uh, uh, fits f i t s and the legal community they love that because that's that's much easier for them to understand so if your data is is really one of those uh, one of those collections of data that can uh, can be uh, uh, can be manipulated by fraud that will be one condition the other one if there's an intermediate a uh, person or uh, entity in the middle you want to get rid of, then that's the second letter, which is I. The T of the throughput, that means the flow of the data is really continuous. It's not just one incident. And the last one is stable data. We're talking about the stable data that you can control, like the transactions, it's well defined, you know, um, on and off. Uh, this kind of, of the FITS model, if you have all these fours, will help you to say, okay, well, the blockchain will help me. You know, making sure that uh, uh, you know uh, my data is secure. Where is, uh, I mean, blockchain technology trends? Where where we see the blockchain technology in 2018 and after? And I'm not going to spend that much time here because I think I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm going a little bit slow here. So I'm going to go over this one very quickly. You see that uh, in 2018, the trends for the blockchain is uh, the scales will be in demand. The uh, blockchain will go to enterprise applications. Uh, the blockchain will be one of the one of the players in the IoT security. And then there is this model, which is called zero trust model. Uh, I have I have a paper about that uh, on my uh, on my LinkedIn. You're welcome to read it. But let me go over uh, you know all these uh, uh, the uh, concept or the trends for 2018. Skills. We need people. We need people who understand blockchain technology. Uh, and that goes not only for the programmers, because the programmers are the, you know, are the core of that. You program it from the smart, you know, contracts to, to the, to the, you know, uh, talking to the blocks from the genesis to all the different blocks to make sure everything is, everything is okay from the miners to the, you know, proof of work, proof of stake, all these things we need people to, we need, you know, engineers. We need staff. We need we need skilled uh, people to deal with blockchain technology. It's in demand. And if you if you look at any study about how many people, you know, qualified for this or consider themselves that they know about the blockchain, you're going to see that you are in the minority. Is there? We don't have that many people to cover the need or the demand coming from for the blockchain. So that's number one. Number two is now the enterprise is looking for this. Starbucks, you know, Amazon, all these things will be looking at the applications for the blockchain at the enterprise level. So they're going to use one of the technologies of IBM, one of the technologies, you know, of SAP, you know, or uh, you know, uh, all these all these kind of of applications for the blockchain and the IoT security, which we're going to talk about it in the next slides here. The zero trust model is an interesting concept. It's not new. It's not new at all. The the uh, the concept, uh, you know, it's it's in the market. It's in the in, in the research in the paper for years. But this is the story we are facing here. And I want you to think for a second about this kind of explanation. Uh, when we talk about blockchain, blockchain itself is not a new concept. In 1991. The digital, you know, uh, stamp or digital timestamp was, you know, the building block for, you know, for the uh, for the blockchain technology. 
and it was used to uh, to identify the documents and that's 1991 that's before the internet before we have all this and and but it's it's it died it's nobody used it because we don't have the infrastructure for that and then in 2008 2009 we have this the bitcoin a paper by by uh, by the founder of the technology of uh, Bitcoin it talks about the distributed ledger and talk about it. So so it's not new. Even the IoT itself is the same thing. It's not a new concept. It's just scaling up whatever we have here. Uh, and the blockchain is peer to peer. So peer to peer is the beginning of the internet. When people start connecting computers, it's peer to peer. So what we do, we revisit the old ideas, the old technologies, all the old concept we have, and we just because we have enough technology, enough tools, now it makes sense to us. Same thing goes with the artificial intelligence. In 1991, 1998, you know, many years this one, you see all these movies, we don't have the tools at that at that time. Now we have the tools. So that's, that's the concept. Back to the zero trust model, uh, never trust and always verify. That's the underlying concept of this, which means you check everything. Now, if I log into, a computer network of the school, San Jose State. After this one, I can do whatever you want because my credentials are approved. If we are using the zero trust model, you don't go through that. Even if I am in, there are actually multiple checkpoints for me to make sure that my activity is within the norm, the, the profile of whatever I'm doing. And that's the difference here. And that's why uh, the zero trust, the name zero trust is, I don't care if you are inside the castle or outside the castle, I'm not going to trust you. I'm going to check everything you're doing. I'm going to look at the logs. I'm going to look at the activities. If it's off, then I'm going to flag it and we're going to look at that. So that's that's what we look at it for, uh, you know, for 2018. So what is the blockchain simplest definition is distributed ledger technology emerge as an uh, object of uh, intense uh, interest for the, for the tech and industry. And many people, whether it's the financial, you know, uh, whether it's the, uh, the entertainment, uh, you, you name it, any industry is really interested in this kind of technology. Some of the advantages, some of the advantages of the uh, blockchain and uh, blo uh, public, secure and decentralized. Uh, those are the advantages. I'm going to talk about them in a second here. So it's public for the nodes that are dealing with the blockchain. I could be a node. But I don't have the computing power here in my in, in my computers to to join the nodes of Ethereum or Ripple, so they can consider me as part of the network. Talking about twenty five thousand nodes for Ethereum there, or Bitcoin have seven thousand nodes. So I to be part of that one now, it's public for me the transaction. It's like somebody, uh, you know, t somebody will tell me that okay, so ten thousand dollars from this part from this part to that. I know about the ten thousand, but I don't know. I don't have the inside information about the private key and, and more information, but I know that about the transaction. The transaction is clear to me. Uh, the other one is uh, decentralized. And this is back again to the issue of decentralization. Our problem with, uh, with the current infrastructure of the, of the internet, of the internet of things is the decentralization. You have to go back to the server to get the permission of processing. And if that's happened, you're done with it. And then everything is fine. It's like me accessing the, uh, the network of the school, and then I can do whatever I want. Um, the um, a simple a simple example I use all the time to explain blockchain to people who are not in the technical side, uh, you know, uh, is, is is this example. I tell them, okay, you you work at this building, and this building has a uh, hundred employees, and there is, uh, you know, a security guard at the door, and you have your badge, you have your credential. In the current system, I would show the security guard my credentials or my card or my badge, and he or she will let me in. Then inside the building, I can do whatever I want. I mean, because I have the badge and I'm done with it. So people look at me, oh, he has a badge, so we're done. If you take this one and translate this one to blockchain, I will assign out of the 100, I will say something like 80 of them will be the points where they're going to approve somebody's in the building. So the you know I will go into the building and the first person the, fin the first node will say okay well approve and they will communicate to the next one they say okay I approve this one and I approve it I approve it and I approve it so by about eighty percent and this number is up to you to decide the the, the level of of uh, you know of security in the first scenario I can bribe the security guard I can knock him off you know and 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 
out, you know, and can just, you know, in a getting with one defense. But here I have to deal with 80% 80, 80 of, the, of the people in the building. And if you want to change one, you have to talk to all of them. And that make it more, you know, acceptable for people to understand why the distributed concept of blockchain is, is more secure. Because you, have, you, you are distributing the trust instead of having the trust in one node or in one server or with one person. And it is secure. The database can only be extended. And previous record has information about the previous one. So you, you just keep adding. You keep adding. You keep adding. If there is any changes in this one, then the whole thing will, will be nullified, will be denied. And then you have to take a fork if you want to continue with this one. And everybody knows about this one. This is a completely different information here. The blockchain and IoT. How can the blockchain help the IoT? Uh, accelerate the transactions because of the trust factor here, reduce the cost, and at the same time build the trust. So those are the main benefits for the IoT and how the IoT will look at the, uh, look at the blockchain as something that will help. We're avoiding the famous single point of failure, the security gap at the door. So we are dealing with multiple points so the trust responsibility will be distributed and then it's going to make us uh, you know uh, trust the system more because i know that i i can change the mind of five six but i cannot change the mind of you know 80 or, or in the case of the uh, you know the public or the real companies you're talking about hundreds maybe thousands of nodes uh, this model and this is where i want to show you exactly how can we use the uh, blockchain in, in iot in this model, the blockchain will treat the message as a financial transaction in a Bitcoin network. Uh, so enable, you know, the message is changed. Devices will leverage the smart contract. And I'm going to talk about the smart contract, which then, you know, that uh, the, which uh, model the agreement between the different parts. The smart contract, it's, a, it's an algorithm. It's a software. And we have some issues with the smart contract lately. Uh, because if you have a bad programmer, you have a bad smart contract. You have to be careful about this. Because everything is built on programming. So if your programming is has some problems, then it's going to propagate to the to the rest of the network. So and, and, and that's why it's 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 not you know it's not the, the ultimate solution here. Still, it started by the human and, and, and we have to be careful about what we have applied, we have to have all the checkpoints there. What are the challenges for applying? So we talk about the benefits. Now we're going to talk about the challenges of using the blockchain and IoT. Scalability. That's a big one. A lot of people talk about, and this is related to, okay, so I can apply this one to 10,000, 5,000, what about millions? Millions of sensors, millions of points, millions of customers. How can I apply this one to that level? Do we have enough technology that will go through the scalability for the for the blockchain storage is another one because you have to store the records and this is how we verify them the storage now we're talking about storing every single record there's no way to change it but i can verify it i can look at it processing power and time that's another issue and that's why i mentioned the 5g and i told you 5g can can help in solving some of the processing and the the power in in this uh, you know in this case and lack of scales take us back to the but now here's another problem now here's another problem. Before we talk about, we don't have enough skills for the uh, blockchain. Now we're going to talk about, you know, we don't have enough skills for blockchain and IoT. So you're adding more to the mix here. So I need somebody who understands the application of blockchain and IoT environment. And 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 that's that's where the companies are struggling. The Silicon Valley, the Silicon Valley is looking right and left for people who have this kind of skill. Hire people right on the spot when it comes. If you have it in your resume, if you have it in your CV, if you have it in LinkedIn, you know, you're going to receive tons of those you know, recruiters asking you, are you interested? You, you, you know, looking for a change. You know, we have this, we have that. Uh, the, uh, the, one of the partners of, uh, and I don't want to the name of the uh, VC, the venture capitalist, you know, out of respect to um, her request, but they receive about uh, $800 million in funding. Uh, and uh, they told them 20% of the 800 million, you have to spend it in blockchain technologies and IoT technology. That was the, the that that actually was the main condition for uh, the infusion of the cash into the VC. 
and I met with her with with a, with a certain group, you know, in, in uh, you know, uh, in university, and and we talk about it. She was afraid of something called ICO, initial coin offering. She said, "I don't understand it. I don't trust it. I have no idea why should I give you hard cash for a series of numbers." So that's that's one of the things that and and I told her, uh, you know, I told her what will make you feel comfortable dealing with something like this. Her answer was, I need analysts. I need people who understand that, who can explain it to me and show it to me and give me some kind of, you know, you know in-depth knowledge about ICO or using the, the cryptocurrency here for real cash is, is not as bad as, see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take about 150 million then uh, to give it, uh, you know, or 100 million and, to, uh, and give it as cash. And I received a promise with serial of digital numbers that's not going to work with me. Legal and compliance issues. The G GDPR uh, in Europe is one of the things that uh, the companies are facing when they're trying to apply a new technology like this. Same thing I talked about. If what if there is a mistake, what if there is a problem, or there is uh, an error in the in the in the password in the uh, software, and there is a glitch in the software in the smart contract. One of the conditions for them is uh, fulfill, and it was a false one. So that's what we are. That's all the some of the challenges facing this one from a storage to scalability to processing, you know, uh, power and time, lack of skills and legal and compliances here. Smart IoT. Let's talk about the smart IoT. The the question here is when we talk about artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, what does that mean? Because one of the things that uh, you will find, uh, when, uh, you know, find out when you talk to people about new technologies, they have their own definition about it, from their own experience or from their own reading. But once we agree on the same definition that this is, this is what is IoT, this is what is blockchain. It's easy for us to exchange the ideas, for us to see the challenges, to see the benefits, to talk about. It. So I have a question for you know, one of the uh, reporters. He asked me. They told me, listen. I know it's artificial intelligence. I know machine robots smarter than us. You know, you know, uh, uh, Skynet, uh, Terminator 2, iRobot, all these kind of sci-fi companies, The Matrix, whatever. You know, but can you explain it to me? And I told him, okay, I'll give you a very simple example, and that could be an example you can you can uh, transfer that one and use it again and again to explain what is uh, what is AI. AI can be explained by its components. So inside the AI, you have the machine learning, you have the deep learning. Sometimes you explain something by explaining the components. So deep, uh, the machine learning itself is an, a computer program, an algorithm. I pro program my computer to find, you know, out of 100 pictures, the picture of people who are smiling, somebody who's smiling. So the computer will go through because I define what is a smile to the computer you know, the shape of the lips, you know, you know, how the different points on the face. And the computer pick five, for example, pictures of the hundred. That is machine learning. I told me this is the, actually this is uh, oh, there are the pictures of the people who smile. Now, deep learning is the next step, which is why they're smiling. Is this is a real smile or this is a fake smile or this is somebody having a gun at your head and you're smiling or this is some defensive smile that is deep learning you take this deep learning and machine learning that is artificial intelligence at multiple levels how accurate at each one of them translate to how accurate is your artificial intelligence and that's that's one of the simplest definitions for artificial intelligence so how can ai help iot AI will come and help IoT in the analytics part. And, and, and I always have this statement. AI is the brain of the IoT. The blockchain is the shield of IoT. So you have somebody who is, you know, the muscle is there. You're talking about everything IoT is the muscles. And the brain of that one is the, the artificial intelligence and the shield to protect it from, from any attack is coming from blockchain. So how can we go through the process of understanding AI and IoT uh, and how it's going to help. And we have a few slides left for us because I want to leave, leave some time for the questions. Uh, six steps 
data preparation, data discovery, uh, visualization, time, series, accuracy, productive and advanced analysis, and real-time allocation. So let's dive into this one very quickly. Data preparation, defining pools of data and cleaning them, which will take us to the concept of dark data and, and, and data or data lakes here. So you have all these tremendous streams of data coming to you from social media, you know, millions and millions of points of data coming to companies like Facebook or coming to com companies like Google all the time. Now, how can I clean it? 80% of the time of the data scientists spent on cleaning data and the other 20% in processing the data, making sense of it. So, because I want to deal with something which makes sense. So how can I, you know, go through this data and, and, and find out that this makes sense to me? There is a pattern here, or oh, this data is the data I want to analyze. Dark data is the data that, and there is, there is actually this, uh, this is a concept that uh, I think uh, one of the financial companies, I remember them, they, they, they have that one, which is the data that part of the big data that's never used. You have records, you have customers' information that nobody touched. Them. The big data, 90% of it is dark data. We'll use 10%. Data lake is, is a concept which you dump all the data and becomes uh, a lake. And then later on, you can dive in and get whatever data. Just put them in one place. So this is the data preparation. It's very important to use the artificial intelligence data. The discovery, finding useful data and define pools of data. What's the next step for you? After you go to the dark data and you go to the uh, uh, data lakes, where is the you know, where is the good data here? Where is the useful data? Here? Visualization of uh, streaming data. This is where the business people, you know, you know, uh, conduct or click with us. You know, I'm talking about the technical people and the business people. This is where the CEO of the company and anybody who has, you know, a part of the C level or the C suite C you know, the first letter of their title, they love this. This is where many of the startups, they go and invest and make sure that the visualization is extremely pleasant, the user experience is great, they see this data and it's easy for them, you know, to understand. And it has to be on the fly, it has to be real time. Now, I don't care what is your, you know, industry. If I have this kind of real time data uh, feeding into the system, and I can make that decision based on this data. I know this data is real and it's, it's, it's a correct data. It's easy for me to deal with the, you know, uh, with the rest. If you took any uh, kind of statistics, you know, classes, you understand which is a time series accuracy, which is garbage in, garbage out. That's what we're talking about. Now, in order for me to, to, to describe any data in the world, I need, you know, certain elements. I need the center of the data. You know, I need the variation of the data. I need to know the outliers of the data. I need to know the, you know, the, the, the graph or the distribution of the data. And I need the time when the data is collected. So if I have all those five elements, then the time series will be clear. So if I have this, one of them is not correct. The outlier is an outlier. I have a lot of outliers there. They're off the chart. Or, uh, or I'm, uh, you know, I, I have a problem with calculating the variation, which is standard deviation and the variance, or a problem with, with, uh, with, you know, in, in, in calculating the center, which is the 4M, the mode, the, the mean, you know, uh, the mid-range, all these things are, are, are important to keep the integrity of the data. Predictive and advanced analytics, very important. AI will help in this. It's a very important step where decision can be made, not for what's going on now, what we are expecting, anticipating that's going to happen in the future. Real-time locations, logistic location. This is this is another part AI will help you. Every time you use the, the you know your GPS for satellite is actually feeding information to your device, and this kind of a real time has to be accurate. Otherwise, you're going to end up somewhere else. And and this is this is why the real time, the real time, you know you know analysis and and uh, logistics are very important. And this is going to be done by having the the artificial intelligence. As Part of it. So what are the challenges? We have we have about three, four slides and we'll be done. The challenges are compatibility between the different devices. Again, back to the standardization. Complex devices talking to each other. You know, AI can go that far. But if you're talking about very complicated devices, very complicated operating systems, very different legacy systems, new systems, how they can talk to each other. 
uh, and the the thing we talk about which is the privacy security and you know and safety uh, the ethical and the legal issues and this is a big thing harvard has a big study about that about an, an ethical ai yes ai has to be ethical and if you ever seen the movie i robot which is i think in 2003 uh, by will smith the the robot saved him instead of saving that young girl because calculated the probability for him to live which is a little bit higher than for for the for the uh, for the little girl and the robot saved him a human would never do that. A human will go after and after the, the little girl and save her first. It doesn't matter. So the ethical thing about it here, how can how can we really apply this? How can we make the robot think in an, an ethical way? Uh, and and uh, at where is the singularity point where the robot will outsmart the people? That's why in, in one of the in one of the uh, uh, interviews I have with with a reporter that's in, from NBC, I told him we need the kill switch. The kill switch has to be there, software and hardware, because because that's that's one thing will we'll ensure that uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna be going through uh, some kind of a Terminator stuff here. And the last one is artificial stability. And excuse me for the language, but yes, we have it. I mean, you look at the 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 feed that the uh, on on your uh, Facebook, and you just bought something, and they told you, okay, we have this for you. And it's exactly the same thing. Well, I mean, come on. Or show me something new. I mean, the system is 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 a, the system is as good as the programmers, as good as the people who are training the system. And the strongest link in the system is the weakest the weakest link to the system, which is the human. And that's what happened when we talk about artificial intelligence. The head of uh, you know of uh, marketing at uh, Salesforce, one of the big companies here in the Silicon Valley and probably in the world when it comes to uh, using. AI and and you know an enterprise. He received an email from one of his salespeople asking him to buy the products from Salesforce, and that shows you that the system did not even recognize that the extension of the email is basically from Salesforce. You're not going to sell your product to your own employees, or you sell it to your boss. So that's that's another thing about the challenges facing there. Okay, so I covered that part. Okay, I think I think I'm, I'm you know at the end of the uh, my presentation here. Uh, I'm get, this is my uh, contact information. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them.